My name is Frank Mazzella. I'm the Learning Products Manager for Vision Research. I'm here to present a series of PCC Phantom Camera Control software tutorials intended to show you many of the various features and processes incorporated in PCC. In this PCC video tutorial, the User Interface Part 1, I will detail the various components that make up the PCC GUI, or Graphical User Interface. Let's start by launching the PCC application. The graphical user interface is built around a multi-layered work area that includes toolbar buttons that provide quick access to the most frequently used functions, a preview and or play panel area where a live view of what the camera sensor sees or playback window to review, edit, save, or perform measurements in reside. The control tabs, which we'll talk about in a moment, and two status bars, one for the PCC GUI located at the bottom of the window and another associated with the live or preview panel. The manager tab is where you will control connect the phantom cameras along with any cine stored within the camera's RAM or circular memory buffer or integrated non-volatile flash memory attach phantom cine mag or cine flash. It is also where you will manage any previously saved cine files that have been opened in PCC. We'll detail these capabilities more later in this video. The live control tab can be used to access a specific phantom camera for use Define the camera's capture or recording parameters. Place the camera into the recording state. Stop the capture process. Or send the soft trigger to a specific camera or camera group. We'll talk more about camera groups later in this series. The Play Control tab is where you can review Edit, save, and or perform measurement analysis on the CINE files. We will detail all the features and options associated with the Play tab in future video tutorials. A preview panel not only provides a live view of what the camera sees, but it also provides status indicators. While the play panel is used to review, edit, save, or perform measurements on a cine, it also provides status indicators for cine's access via a camera and status information and or progress bars when various camera processes are being performed. Located at the bottom of the graphical user interface is a status bar that provides the coordinates from the default origin, the pixel located in the top left corner of the image, and RGB red, green, blue values of a specific pixel, the pixel located in the center of the crosshair cursor. Okay, let's go back and elaborate on the Manager tab components. At the top of the Manager tab, there are three buttons. The first of these buttons, the left button, is the New Group button. The New Group button is used to add a subgroup under the camera's group or a subgroup under the camera's tree structure. The New Group can contain multiple phantom cameras that can be accessed and controlled simultaneously. However, a camera cannot be placed under two different subgroup folders. It can also be used to create under the Files group, a subgroup that can be used to contain multiple CINE files that can be accessed and or reviewed simultaneously. We'll detail using the Cameras and Files groups features later in this video series. For now, let's add a new group under the Cameras group tree and assign two cameras to the newly created group. We'll start by highlighting the Cameras group, then click 
the new group button. Next, I'll assign the new subgroup a name by typing it in. For this example, I'm going to type in Camera Group Demo. The only thing left to do is associate cameras to the Camera Group Demo subgroup. To do this, I'm going to drag two Phantom cameras into the subgroup folder. Notice both cameras are now associated, or under, the Cameras Group Demo folder. As I said earlier, we can also assign Cine files to a group, or subgroup, that can be accessed and or reviewed simultaneously. So let's create a subgroup under the Files group and place a couple of previously opened Cine files into the created subgroup, similar to what I just did when I created the Cameras group. I'll highlight the Files group and click the New Group button. And just as I did for the Cameras group, I'll assign a name to the newly created subgroup, in this case, Multi-View Demo. And finally, I'll drag the files into the new subgroup folder. Notice that all three files are now under the Multi-View Demo folder. As I mentioned earlier, no phantom camera can be associated with multiple subgroups. The same holds true for Cine files. However, any phantom camera or Cine file under any subgroup, under a subgroup tree, can be controlled simultaneously. Again, we'll talk more about this in another video later in this series. The middle button is the Add Simulated Camera button. It is used to simulate phantom camera models. This feature can be very useful to determine a camera's available resolutions and sample rates or recording rates for various camera models prior to purchasing a new camera. To simulate a particular camera model, I'll click the Add Simulated Camera button and select the camera model I wish to simulate from the Camera Model pull-down selection list in the Add Simulated Cameras dialog window. For this example, I'm going to select a Phantom V2510. Now, if I wanted to, I could simulate a camera I already have by entering the serial number of the camera in the serial data entry field. Since I'm not going to do that for this example, I'm going to enter the camera model number of the camera being simulated, in this case 2512. This will make it easier for me to recognize the simulated camera in the camera's group. If I wanted to, I could even leave this at the default serial number. Finally, I click the Add Simulated Camera button in the dialog window to add it to the camera's group. And close the dialog window. To remove the simulated camera, I need to restart the PCC application. The last of these three buttons is the Remove from Tree or Delete button, used to remove a Cine file or a subgroup along with any objects under the subgroup tree. To remove an object, select the object to be removed, in this example, the Angle Cine, and click the Remove from Tree button. Deleting a Cine file under a Files group or subgroup only removes it from the Manager tab. It does not delete it from the source location. The Cameras Group list displays the connected Phantom cameras that can be controlled via PCC. You can tell that cameras are connected and active to PCC by their icons. They have some texture to them and a bit of color associated with them. If I disconnect the Ethernet cable connected to the Mero 320S camera, the camera will be removed from the camera list. until it is detected again via PCC. 
This occurs because the software has been set to the See All Available Cameras options. In the Application Preferences Cameras tab, Camera Visibility Options. This optioning will be detailed in the Defining the PCC Application Preferences video tutorial. However, if the camera software is set to the See Only Previous Camera List option in the Application Preferences dialog window, the icon changes to a flat gray icon, as you can see here. When this occurs, it indicates PCC knows that the camera should be connected to it, had been connected in the past, but is not currently connected. When the Ethernet cable is plugged back in, the software will go through a protocol to detect the camera, and after a short period, re-establish a connection to it. As you can see, the icon has come back with a bit of texture and color to it. This optioning will be detailed in the Defining the PCC Application Preferences video tutorial. Vision Research assigns the serial number of the camera as the camera's name by default. To change the name of the camera, I can highlight the camera I wish to change the name for, then click on the camera's name to open an edit window to enter the new name. In this example, I'll change the name of the camera to Miro 320S Cam 2. I could also right click on the camera and select device info from the pop-up window. Then type the new name in the camera name data entry field. To apply the name change, I simply hit the enter key. To ignore the change, I'll close the device info window. For this example, I'll change the name of the camera to Phantom V12 Cam 1. The device info window displays along with the camera name, the serial number of the camera, its IP address, the Vision Research hardware code and model in parentheses, the CineMag firmware version, if applicable, the installed firmware, FPGA, field programmable gate array, and kernel revisions, if applicable. It also displays the installed RAM, FBM, frame buffer memory size in megabytes, and the size of the available flash memory, integrated, CineMag, or CineFlash in megabytes. Individual cameras can be opened in a preview panel by double-clicking on the desired camera. Notice the name of the camera is displayed in the upper left corner of the preview panel. And a status indicator in the lower left hand corner indicates the camera is in the live or preview mode. We will elaborate on the preview panel in the Capturing Your First Cine tutorial. I could also right click on the camera and select the show only images from this option in the pop-up window. Before I continue, I'm going to close the open preview panels so I can demonstrate the next option. Multiple cameras, under a cameras group, can also be opened in their own preview panel simultaneously by clicking the group and selecting the show only images from this option in the pop-up window. The preview panels of cameras assigned to a group or subgroup tree can be closed simultaneously by clicking on the group's root and selecting the Close All Groups Windows option. Now let's discuss opening CINEs. If the CINE is stored in the camera's RAM, it's displayed as CINE N, where N represents the CINE number. If the CINE is stored in the camera's internal flash or attached Phantom CINE MAG or CINE flash, it will be displayed with the nomenclature CINE FN where N represents the flash CINE number. To open an individual CINE in a play panel, stored in a camera's RAM or integrated non-volatile flash memory, attached fan of CINE MAG or CINE flash, double-click the desired CINE. When I do this, notice the play panel opens with the name of the camera and file I selected, 
indicated in the upper left hand corner of the playback panel. We will elaborate on the play panel in the reviewing your first CINE and editing and saving your first CINE tutorials. An individual camera's RAM CINE can be deleted by selecting the CINE to be deleted and clicking the Remove from Tree button. When the Delete CINE from Camera Warning or Confirmation window displays, I can click OK to continue or Cancel to ignore the delete request. To delete all CINEs stored in the camera's RAM, I can right click on the camera with the CINEs to be deleted, then select the Delete All RAM CINEs command from the pop up window. When the Delete All CINEs from RAM of the selected camera warning confirmation window displays, I can click Continue or Cancel to ignore the delete request. To delete all RAM CINEs from multiple cameras in a camera group tree, I'll right click the root cameras group and select the delete all RAM CINEs command from the pop-up window. And once again, when the delete CINEs from RAM of the selected cameras warning confirmation window displays, I'll click OK to continue or cancel to ignore the delete request. Individual non-volatile flash stored CINEs can only be deleted from a phantom CINE flash by selecting the CINE and clicking the Remove from Tree button. When the Continue by Erasing Flash CINEs camera name Erase Flash confirmation window appears, I'll click the OK button to continue or Cancel to ignore the delete request. If I attempt to delete an individual CINE stored in a camera's integrated non-volatile flash memory module, or a Phantom CINE mag, PCC will display a confirmation window that states, Continue by Erasing Flash, along with the camera name. Proceeding with this process will delete all the flash CINEs, not just the one. Therefore, caution must be taken when deleting CINEs stored on either of these options. At the bottom of the Manager Control tab, there are two more buttons, the Application Preferences button and the Camera Repair and Firmware Upgrade Nucleus button. We will cover the Application Preferences dialog window in the Defining the PCC Application Preferences video tutorial and the Camera Repair and Firmware Upgrade Nucleus application in the Camera Repair and Firmware Upgrade Nucleus application video tutorial and the Camera Repair and Firmware Upgrade Nucleus application to add a secondary IP address video tutorial.